Despite how difficult it may seem to obey God's word, when hope has been eclipsed, be assured that blessings are always more than you can ask or imagine. Number one, let's look at the call. In the first call, Jesus gave an example of his greatness. These fishermen had never had a catch like that. In fact, <laughs> they had done their job. They had toiled all night and caught Nothing. But just because Jesus said it, they said, we're going to do it. And guess what? When they did what Jesus said, a great catch. That could be the theme of this whole message. When you do what Jesus said. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> All right? They started out excited. They left everything and followed Jesus. Perhaps your salvation story is one of those exciting ones. I'm, I'm following Jesus. Perhaps your salvation story is a quiet one. You know, yeah, I grew up in church. I, you know, I know God. I'm good. Perhaps you're going, am I going to have a salvation story? Wherever you are, Jesus has a perpetual, follow me, come on. But then something happens. Something happened to Peter. Between, the, between that first follow me and that second follow me, Peter had seen betrayal. Peter had been the betrayer. Peter had been the denier. Peter had seen the arrest. Peter had gone to the funeral. Peter knew the cross. Peter knew about the tomb. Peter knew the, the stone. He needed reassurance from Jesus that he could still be used. He knew Jesus. He'd seen him three times now. But he still said, I'm going fishing. Perhaps your situation is like Peter's. Life be lifing. <laughs> huh? Perhaps there's been job losses, uh, broken promises, financial reversals. We know about those. Relationship breakups, broken hearts, friendships that have gone awry, unexpected setbacks, health issues, unexpected diagnoses. You know, like the older I get, stuff just starts hurting. <laughs> you know, you wake up and you go, ah, I didn't hit that. I didn't fall. What? We call it mystery pain. You know, young folk are like, what? Just keep on living, baby. <laughs> Just stuff. Just starts breaking down. What is that? Wayward children. You know, my sis here is about to have a new one. God bless you. Mine are in their 30s. Any of you who have grown kids? Yeah. Yeah. They leave your house, and then you can't tell them, go to your room and cut that out. <laughs> and they tell you stuff, which necessitates your need for my newest book. Didn't see that coming. <laughs> Subtitle, when how they're living is not how you raised them. <laughs> Life be lifing. Strange family members, unfair business practices. My car is in the shop right now because the coolant has started to leak into the engine. Yeah, I need a new engine. They quoted $6,755.92. What? <laughs> what? Wow. The death of loved ones. What the heck is going on? 
Well, we fall down, one songwriter says, but we get up. First John 1 John 1.9 talks about when you bring your stuff on yourself, because you know we do that. Huh? And First John 1 John 1.9 says to believers, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then there's a, a verse that says, no temptation is taking you but such as is common to man, but God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tested above what you're able, but will, with the temptation, give you a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Between the first follow me, stuff, life be life in and makes you want to say, I'm going fishing. But then there's the cooperation that happens in these passages. Even though life happens, Peter says, nevertheless, at your word, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to do, I'm just going to do <laughs> What you say, I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know why I'm even doing it. My friends tell me, I think I bring this up every time I come here. I don't know why. But I bring up tithing. Malachi 3 says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse and prove me. Herewith, saith the Lord, if I will not open up the windows, plural, of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not be able to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Now, either God means that or he doesn't. And very seldom does God say, test me. Usually God says to us, trust me. But on this, he says, test me. So, I was teaching, I told, you, I, taught, I told you before, I taught high school for 35 years. I got out alive, y'all. <laughs> and I was teaching my seniors, Malachi, and I said, okay, we're going to do this until it doesn't work. Guess how many additional conversations we had about that? Zero. Because when God says test him, he, you cannot outdo him. So, if you don't believe in tithing, all right, you are perfectly free not to believe in tithing. But you are also perfectly free not to have God's windows of heaven blessing. Do you feel lucky? <laughs> All we have to do is cooperate with God's word. In the first story, they cooperated. They got a great catch. In the second story, they said, okay, even though we're out here saying I've gone fishing, we're going to obey. We put the net on the other side. And we got a great catch, 153. I did the math. <laughs> With that 153, that was almost enough fish to represent each day of the three years that they spent with Jesus. They would be having a great catch every day, following Jesus. Hebrews 13, 15 to 16 says, through, though, through Jesus, therefore, let us continu continually offer to God the sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifice, 
God is pleased. Sometimes you don't feel like praising God. It's a sacrifice of praise. But that's okay. <laughs> Do it anyway. My experience with grief after losing my husband, I haven't lost him. He's not lost. I know exactly where he is. After 21 years, I did not think that was going to hurt as bad as it hurt. That hurt, y'all. But people were saying to me every Sunday, you're so strong. And I was like, what? What? But what was happening was I was continuing to go to church. I was continuing to give Jesus a sacrifice of praise. And he was rebuilding me. He was rebuilding my smile. I was crying less and less. He comes through, people. Despite how difficult it may seem to obey God's word, when hope has been eclipsed, be assured that blessings are always more than you can ask or imagine. He promises that. That's another one of my favorites, Ephesians 3, 20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. I taught English exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask. God can do that. Do you trust him? We just sang the song, I trust in God. My savior, the one who will never fail. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> he will never fail. Do you trust him? The last part, the last point I want to pull out of those stories is the care of Jesus. Look at how much he cared for Peter. Peter had kicked Jesus to the curb when Jesus needed him. Most of you, if your best friend had kicked you to the curb like that, when you really needed them, you'd still be talking about how bad they are today but not Jesus. Jesus came to get Peter. Peter, do you love me? Yeah. Then Peter, get back to work. Feed my sheep. What have you been doing since the first follow me and today? Maybe you're in that middle spot. Life has lifed. You're like, I don't know if I can trust God anymore. He didn't come through for me on that. Hmm. Think that through. <laughs> put your hand, everybody put your hand in front of your face. Blow. Let everything that hath breath. Praise the Lord still, even if it's a sacrifice of praise. As we are obedient to the follow me's of Jesus, whether before, during, or after our I'm going fishing declarations, we can still continue to answer Jesus' question do you love me with a yes? I guarantee you that as you obey the Lord's follow me's, you will continually fall more and more deeply in love with him.